Sometimes you have to make do with what you've got. And today we have only $136 and we're certainly gonna be making do in titles like Fortnite, which is a recently released free to play game that's similar to PUBG. So we'll be testing that out and also PUBG and also Destiny 2 to see how far we can stretch this $136. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a PC that really just hits all the marks in terms of price performance. We've got a budget CPU, the X3430. This thing comes in at $7 and it's that good for the money that I might give it a dedicated video on its own. So stay tuned for that. And then for the cooler, we're using a $4 Sith Kabuto. Now this thing is extremely cheap, but it didn't come with a mounting installation kit hence why it was so cheap. However, I did manage to get around this and I did make a separate video, which I'll put in the description below, where I used silicon bond and glued it down to the actual motherboard and CPU. And the temperatures were actually okay. So for this CPU and cooler combo, we're putting it on a H55M motherboard. Now I picked this up in Thailand in a recent used parts hunt and I got it for around about $30. Very cheap when you couple it with the CPU. And then we move on to the memory. We got this for $25, two sticks of XPG data memory. Well, I actually got it for free, but I'm just pricing it up on what would you expect to pay for eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Now it is two sticks, so it will run in dual channel and it does overclock quite well, even to 1600 megahertz on the XMP profiles. And for graphics, we went with a HD7870. Now I picked this up for $45. And although it is quite old in terms of its age, it's actually really good still in terms of its performance and we'll find that out a little bit later. And then continuing on this trend of extreme budget, we've got a cooler and power supply, both Cooler Master for $20. Now the power supply is a 500 watt power supply and it does have around about 400 watts available on the 12 volt line, which is gonna be plenty enough for today's components even when we overclock both the CPU and the graphics card to higher levels. And then lastly for the drives, we're going with a really odd configuration, two 160 gigabyte hard drives. I did try to RAID 0 on, but the motherboard that we have doesn't support RAID 0. So we're just gonna install Windows on one. And then of course, we've got an extra 160 gigabytes to play around with. Now I did pull these hard drives out of PCs that people didn't want anymore. So I technically paid nothing for them. But honestly, if you're looking for hard drives this old and banged up, I wouldn't pay any more than $5. So anyway, that brings the total of this build to 136 US dollars, or if you're in Australia, about 180 Australian dollars. But without any further ado, let's put this thing together. For the overclocks, the graphics card did extremely well. We got 1220 megahertz on the core and we got an extra 200 megahertz out of the memory, which is effectively quad pumped. So it'd be around an extra 800 megahertz effective on the GDDR5. And now this will allow it to perform pretty well in games. The Fire Strike score is scoring close to that of a GTX 1050, or if not a little bit better, I believe. And so that's gonna equate really well in terms of gaming performance, especially for a $45 graphics card. Now, when it came to the CPU, the X3430, this thing comes out of the box at 2.53 gigahertz, but we managed to get it to 3.6 gigahertz on this $4 cooler and this really inexpensive $30 motherboard. Now, keep in mind, I could get it up to 3.8 gigahertz, but I'm just not comfortable with running something that's got a real entry-level VRM at higher temperatures and putting more stress on that VRM. As when I tested it with an IR gun, the MOSFETs were reading about 68 degrees, which of course T-junction levels would be a lot hotter than that, or at least a little bit hotter. And so I'm not comfortable running my VRM with that extra level of stress because it could mean in the long run, a blown out motherboard versus one that doesn't blow out. Though of course that big question remains, how does it perform in games? Let's take a quick look.
was the whole reason for today's PC, that is Fortnite. This ran extremely well on this PC. We we're getting around 50 to 70 FPS most of the times on medium graphical settings and the lowest view distance possible. When I did up the view distance, however, there was some quite nasty stuttering. So for these settings, this computer did run quite well. There was the occasional stutter, so I'm not sure if that's the hardware itself or it's just those two really old hard drives that I'm using and especially with background processes going on with Windows, that can indeed cause stuttering due to those old hard drives. Though the next game we had was PUBG and I was surprised, this actually ran really well at 1080p on very low settings. We're getting around 50 to 60 FPS, but it was good to see that this PC for $136 could run this game and run it really well. I did have an enjoyable experience. And then we had the last game, which I'll pull up for you guys, Destiny 2, that was running again around 70 FPS at 1080p on a blend of low and high settings and it was really gorgeous to play even on these settings. So ultimately all three games here at 1080p were a success. They were running really well. Though if I had a little bit of extra money and I had to change things around, which I probably will, then I would use a normal cooler, not a glued down cooler, because I think I'm gonna sell this PC and if I do, then I definitely don't wanna sell someone a silicon bonded uh, CPU to CPU cooler. They'll probably look at it and think like, what is going on here? So I'll probably replace the cooler with something with a mounting kit. Though if it was using it for me personally, I would keep the glued down cooler on there because it's all about price performance at the end of the day. And you're saving a lot of money with something like this. Though also the other thing I'll do is probably change the hard drive around, even for a single 500 gigabyte hard drive that's used, but it's a couple of years newer than those two old hard drives as they are really slow and they are really sluggish. But on that note, what about the overclocks? The last thing to talk about in today's video, they were extremely good. I mean, the X3430, again, I'll probably be doing a dedicated video to that CPU because it's $7. $7, I just think you're not gonna get the price performance, especially in games, that you're gonna get with other CPUs. Even one of my favorites, the X5650, in terms of just the CPU alone, I don't think it's gonna come close to this thing because you're usually gonna couple a CPU like this with a medium end graphics card, like a GTX 780 at best, and you're gonna get really good price performance. So I will be taking a closer look at that CPU and also the graphics card, the 7870, it still goes really hard. I did manage to do a temperature test on the graphics cards at 80% fan speeds, which isn't that loud on this GPU, and the temperatures hit 62 degrees max in a 27 degree ambient environment. So the overclocks were really impressive, the temperatures were good, I was happy with how everything performed in today's rig. Anyway guys, that's it for today's PC. If you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you love price performance and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.